Always love it when Dr. David Klein drops by the studio and we can talk health. It's your health, and we do it in ways that make it so easy to understand. It's great. So don't fall for all the hype on TV. Don't fall for all the commercials that have 50 seconds of side effects and 10 seconds of the name of the product. Okay, listen to the doctor right here on the Rob Newton Resource Hour, and we put these in other places as well. Today, I want to ask the doctor about the ill effects of weight, not just the diabetes and problems like that, but it can have a real problem on the body. Okay, what we'll do is we're going to start with the top and work our way down. Got okay, it. one of the issues with the weight gain, one of the earliest things that seems to hit people, I mean, other than the fact that you can't see your genitalia, is the fact that you can't sleep at night. Okay, you'll end up with obstructive sleep apnea from the weight gain. You know, this this weight, this tissue that occurs, uh, that will accumulate, let's say, under the chin, can in fact occlude, it can in fact cause it uh, much more difficult for you to sleep at night, causing obstructive sleep apnea. And there are a lot of doctors around Florida, there are a lot of doctors around the country that make a good living treating people for sleep apnea, when in fact the best cure for sleep apnea is one thing, it's called losing weight for God's sake. Children don't typically get this, okay? And just because you snore doesn't mean you have obstructive sleep apnea. Now, I've been doing this a long time. Everybody that goes in for a sleep study is told one thing. Oh, you have sleep apnea. Nobody ever comes out with a negative study. Ask around. Ask any of your friends that have ever had it. Not one negative study. What does this mean? It means they're probably being overread. Lose weight, you will sleep a whole lot better. Weight gain, what else can it cause? It can cause your allergies to get worse. Well, you're going to wonder why mm. this might be. Well, you just, just don't gain weight. You just don't put down fat in your belly. Not in your butt, not in your thighs, but also in your face. And so what will happen is, is that when you have swelling of the turban, it's swelling of those bones that allow you to drain your sinuses, fat will deposit there as well, making it easier to occlude. What else? Okay, let's just look down at your hips. One of the problems with the hips is that you have to use them. When you sit down to drive your car, you're sitting on your hips. When you're going to stand up, you're abusing your hips by the muscles contracting around them, allowing you to extend. So when you stand up to do, oh, let's say you were going to hang wallpaper. Let's say you were going to hang drywall. Mm -hmm. You're now extending your back. When you're leaning forward to brush your teeth, comb your hair or do the dishes, let's say you know, you're out there vacuuming the floor, you are now putting the muscles around the hip under extended tension. The muscles then become fatigued, they become inflamed, and you end up with these low back pain issues. Well, here's what I want you to, uh, to consider. If you were to hold a telephone book, now you remember a telephone book? You know, those are the things you throw away now because they're unnecessary. Whatever you do, don't advertise on them because nobody cares about them anymore. But if you were to hold one of these heavy weights out, okay, out by your side, okay, with your arm outstretched as mm -hmm. if you were to shake somebody's hand or outstretched as if you were going to uh, hang a, a plant on it, you can't hold a weight very long. Okay, it's called moment arm. It's a matter of physics. The torque about your shoulders becomes such that you can't hold this weight very long. But if you then tuck your hand in as if you were trying to hold, a, let's say, a plate of food, like they used to do the car hops, remember the day? Yep. Okay, you can hold that weight indefinitely because of something called moment arm or torque. The more weight that you've got, the more weight that you're carrying, apart, you know, and, and the greater the distance from the hips, the more damage gets done. So a taller person will carry weight much more difficultly than a short person with regards to hip pain. But short or tall, both rip the heck out of their knees and feet with equal alacrity, with equal uh, velocity as it turns out. Why? Well, every time you take a step, let's say you weigh 200 pounds. Let's say you weigh 250 pounds. It doesn't really make any difference. Every time you take a step, Okay, each one of those joints in your knees has to carry a minimum of about 200 pounds worth of weight. But there's more, okay? As you start to move, as you start to accelerate, as you tend to, uh, let's say, arch yourself, that moment arm ends into uh, coming into play, and you can end up with tensions and pressures that may exceed five, six, seven hundred 700 pounds. Ooh. Your knees will deteriorate. Okay, they break down. Your hips, they will deteriorate. They will break down. The bones in your feet will deteriorate and they will break down. Your arches will fall. Will fall. Your, kneel, your knees will go away and your hips will break. So you have to do what you can 
and understand that it's not a gradual process putting the weight on and it's not a gradual process taking it off. But everybody focuses on diabetes. They focus on heart disease. They focus on kidney disease. They focus on all kinds of things. But the fact of the matter is that the lighter you are, the longer you will live. The lighter you are, the happier you will be. The lighter you are, the less pain you will experience. Mm -hmm. And is that true for everybody? Of course not. It's true for most and it's probably gonna be true for you. Well, if we go back to TV land on TV. Oh, I remember TV Channel 67, land. whatever it oh, is. Oh, TV land. And you go back and you watch Andy Taylor or Father to Know His Best or any of those. The father was of the shape of people of that era. Skinny. You look at the fathers right. now and they're, they're, they're very large people. Well, there are no skinny people anymore. Look at your own photographs. Okay, your own photographs from grade school, you know, where all the kids were lined up, you know, like in, in like like little 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 animals, you know, just lined up to do a trick. Once a year they all had to do these class photos. The fat kid in the class would now be considered normal. Right. And if you don't believe this is the case, just for grins, go to an antique store. Just pick one and look up just, just pick up some of the old clothing and see if it fits you. Okay, these were typical garments of the time. Try to put your mom's wedding dress on, see how, how, that, how that ends up. Okay, what happens is, is that people get larger with age, but more so as our age has made people larger to the extent where the clothing industry, I just did an article on this, the clothing industry to sell more clothing downed the, uh, the, the sizes. This is nothing new. This happened in the 1970s. Okay, wow. well, a, you know, a size four in 1970 was big. It's like a size 10 now, okay? My God, you know, so what they had to do is nobody wanted to buy a dress that said size 10 on it, so you simply change it. Oh, I'll buy that one. It says four on it, okay? <laughs> it's, 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 it, 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 it's bizarre. It is laughable psychology, and the people buying the products all know it's true. And I want to go back to something in an earlier show that we repeat very often when it's the best of Dr. Klein, and that is how much of this weight can we attribute to the soy and the soy lecithin and all that? Well, here's what happened. In 1970, okay, it was found that there was an association between cholesterol levels and heart disease. Not a big association, a rather modest one. So the, the, the folks over at Harvard came out and said, cholesterol must be bad for you, which it isn't, okay? So we pulled cholesterol out of our diets. We introduced soy into our diets, and then all of a sudden people started getting fatter. Cholesterol levels went up, heart disease went up, and cancer did as well. Thank you so much, Boston. Okay, so you know it's a, that's a freshman uh, mistake, you know, with regards to statistics that you know association doesn't imply causality. So how are we making ourselves fat, and what can you do to drop this thing back? The first thing you need to do, the very first thing you need to do, is to pull soy out of your diet. Okay, mm -hmm. and if you're a tree hugger looking at veggie burgers, you're going to think, oh, my God, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Yeah, I know exactly what I'm talking about. There are two iso uh, isoflavones in soy that will fight your thyroid and make you fat. Don't do it. It is poisoning you. It is bad news. In Europe, it's called beneath human consumption, and this is one place where those, those Europeans have it right. In spite of their accents, they got this one correctly. Okay, soy is bad for you, but what else? High fructose corn syrup, corn by itself, inhibits insulin action, which means that your body's insulin levels go up, which lays fat on you. So if you want to make somebody fat, if you want to make somebody a corpulent, if you, if you want to get away from, from the, the epithet, then what you do is you give them food made of corn and soybeans, Co uh, wow. sometimes known as a low-fat, low-cholesterol, Weight Watchers meal. My God, you're making yourself fat with that garbage. So what do I have my patients do? You eat eggs, cream, and butter, not that margarine, and, that, and that's the soy substitute. You watch the cholesterol levels drop to normal. What's normal? Okay, debatable, but you watch their weights diminish. Ooh. You watch their temperatures come back. Their thyroid function starts to return to normal. So you're quite correct. You've pointed out very, very precisely that we've done this to ourselves. But it's easier going on than it is coming off. All right, very good. And you may very well find more great things to help you get that weight off as well as improve your whole physical being. You're going to feel better. I always do when I visit the stages of life. Robin? 
Well, you can get a whole lot more information off our website at uh, stagesoflife.net. You can give us a call at 407-679-3337 and make an appointment. Our office hours are Monday through Thursday, 8 to 5, and we're located in Longwood at 1917 Booth Circle. We're also on Facebook at Stages of Life Medical Institute.